So today we're going to talk about contingencies and contingencies are very important, especially if you're a buyer, because what they, they do is they protect you and your deposit in the event of something procuring that may cause you to have to get out of the deal and it allows you kind of a way to get out of it without losing your deposit. So today we're going to talk about the five most common contingencies that you deal with. You have your inspection contingency, you have your appraisal contingency, you have your loan and financing contingency, then you have your title and escrow contingency, and then you have your contingency to sell your property, right? So the first one we're going to go over is your inspection contingency. What is an inspection contingency? An inspection contingency is basically the buyer's right to inspect the property, look over all the disclosures, and ensure <clears throat> that nothing is wrong with the property, there's not a lot of work that needs to get done, um, or frankly, they, they have the right to ask for anything they want, repairs, um, anything of that nature to be done to the property. Um, really, inspection is there for to protect the buyer in case there is something wrong with the property that they didn't know on the initial inspection, right? You can only see so much when you're walking through the home that you can't really see without getting into the attic or getting under the foundation, um, checking if the AC and heater works properly, right? All those things are typically done by a home inspector, um, pest inspector to make sure there's no termites. Um, roof inspector to make sure the roof is good. So all these things that we don't initially know until we actually get an inspector in. So that's the first contingency because if you do happen to find something wrong with any of those items, you're able to get out. You're not going to lose your deposit. You have every right. You can kind of basically give the seller an option to one, fix these items and you present them with the repair request um, or you can just completely get out of the deal if you want. And at that point, the seller can agree to fix those items. They can agree to fix some items, but maybe not all the items. Or they can just say absolutely not. And at that point, you have the choice if you want to move forward or get out. And then you get your full deposit back. So that's the first contingency. Next, we have the appraisal contingency. This is probably the most important contingency of it all, right? The appraisal is always the most important thing in a transaction and it's what everybody is worried about. Everyone wants to know, oh my gosh, is the house gonna appraise for this price? Oh my gosh, did I overpay? Oh, there's just so many unforeseen things going on and, and people, people just get very nervous about this part of the transaction um, because really, depending on how you structure your offer, um, the appraisal is what's going to hold the deal together. So everybody's typically hoping for the appraisal to come in at value. Um, but what this contingency does for the buyer is basically, let's say if you offered 800,000 for a house, right? And it was listed at 750. Well, based on the comps, we, we probably know that it's not going to appraise for 800. So the buyer is going to have the option when the appraisal comes in, let's say the appraisal came in at 775, right? So there's a $25,000 difference and maybe the buyer doesn't have that cash to come out of pocket. So at that point, what will happen is one, the seller will either agree to the appraised price and now the sales price will go from 800,000 to 775 or what will happen is we will go back into renegotiations, right? which is typically what happens most of the time. And either the seller's going to ask the buyer to make up the difference, to stick with their offered price, or maybe they'll split the difference. Um, some kind of compromise may be made. Um, now, if there is no compromise made and the buyer just doesn't have the funds and the seller doesn't want to accept that and wants to try to get more money for the home, um, at that point, the buyer can now back out of the deal with their deposit. So again, that is one of the things that protects the buyer's deposit in that scenario. So that's what the appraisal contingency does. Now the loan contingency. 
The loan contingency is usually uh, further in the transaction. You get a little bit extra time to deal with the, the loan contingency because it, it typically takes the longest. Um, there's a lot of documents that need to be um, sent in to the lender. There's employment that needs to get checked. Bank statements need to be looked over. There's a lot of things going on through the transaction that the lender typically takes care of. Um, but let's say something happens in the transaction where um, you still have your loan contingency and maybe you maybe you, you're walking into Costco and they happen to approach you for a uh, a brand new credit card, right? And they they have those you know free free little bags they give you if you apply for a city credit card, right? Well. You, you don't think twice about it. You just, you know, it sounds like a good deal, right? You don't really think twice. You weren't told not to do anything like that, so you do it. Well, now your credit's being ran, and you get a $10,000 uh, credit limit, and you're in the process of buying a house. You're almost closed. Well, now the lender is going to see that you just ran your credit, and now you have $10,000 of extra credit now, right? There's a lot of red flags going up, right? Because now they don't know if you plan on buying something on credit, adding more payments to your to your debt they don't know right but it's just red flags so that may cause you to now lose your financing and, and completely ruin the deal um, but because you have your contingency in place you will still get your deposit back because you're protected in case something like that were to happen with your loan right so that's a good example and there's a lot of other examples but basically, your contingency with your loan is to protect you for anything that has to do with the financing um, on the financing end. If something were to happen and you were unable to get your loan. Now, the fourth thing is your title contingency. So what a title contingency typically is, is that's going to protect you in the event that when they do a title search, that no liens come up on the property um, there, there's nothing owed on the property that wouldn't be known um, unless the seller disclosed that or knew. And sometimes the seller may not even know, right? They may have collectors that are coming after them that have put it on the property. Anything can happen, right? But that's why we pay for a title search. That's, that's what they do, the title company that, that is being used. They investigate and make sure there are no liens on the property. Now, let's say, for example, we're in contract and you get the, the title report and it, something does come up, right? Well, well there's, a, there's a lien on the property. Um, at that point, you can either make sure that that gets paid off at the close of escrow um, or before, um, and you can approach the seller about that, um, or you can back out of the deal, right? You have, you have a couple of different options. So... But if you do back out of the deal because of that, you are able to get your deposit back. So again, all these contingencies, they protect your deposit. And these are just ways you can get out of the deal in the event something like this happens. So all these things are just to, to make the buyers aware that you're always protected throughout the transaction. Um, the fifth thing would be if you are selling your property and you're you want to buy a new one, but you don't want to sell your home and then have nowhere to move to, right? You don't want to be homeless. So a lot of times what you can do as a buyer is make an offer contingent on the sale of your home. So you have a contingency. So let's say you, you're wanting to sell your home. Maybe it's listed, but you need the funds from the sale of your home in order to close on your replacement property. So what you're going to do is write an offer contingent on the sale of your property. So, for example, let's say you see a home you like, you put an offer on it. Now, you would have your agent write that contingent on the sale of your property so that way you have funds to close. Now, once you do that, you have to start to sell your property because there are time periods in place where um, they they can allow you, the seller can actually cancel if you take too long to do that. So you you have to be on top of marketing your property, right? Um, so with that, in the event that you are in contract 
and let's say you're selling your property and everything's going smooth and then all of a sudden you're getting to the end of escrow and you removed all your contingencies. You removed your, your inspection, you removed your appraisal, you removed your loan, you removed everything right on the house you were buying. So at that point, you still need to sell your house, but you removed all your contingencies. Well, the good news is, is you still have that close on replacement property contingency, right? Or um, for you to close on your property you're selling. So basically that's gonna protect you if you have a buyer maybe on your property you're selling that has ended up backing out, okay? And something happens on their end, right? They're going through the same process you're going through on your new house. So if something happens on their end and all of a sudden your deal falls apart on the house you're selling, well, you're not held to anything on the house you're buying and you can now back out of that deal and get your deposit or again like there's always more than one option typically um in every scenario there's always more than one option you can either approach the seller of that property and say hey you know they backed out can you give me some more time to relist the property and get someone escrow and at that point they can either say yes or they can say no so that being said you're still able to get out of that deal and get your deposit back so I hope everything I talked about um, was informative and educational for you, um, just to give you an idea as a buyer on how you are protected. And basically, you have all these different things at your disposal that ensure your protection throughout the process. So make sure your agent is telling you these things and, and giving that comfortable feeling that you're always protected because you are. Just because you sign an offer and get it accepted and you put your deposit and give it to a title company, it doesn't mean anything because if something happens, you're always protected, right? You're not, you're not held to anything once you make that decision the first day. There, there's a long period, you know, typically 30 days, but um, there's a lot that goes on. So just know that you're always protected and make sure you find an agent that is always making sure you're protected um, and, and always keeping you in the loop of things, um, making sure that they're explaining things to you like this and how things work and not just telling you to sign and, and that's it, right? Um, so if you have any questions at all, please feel free to contact me. My contact information is below. Um, please like and subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. I'll talk to you soon.